And I came here this morning along with the senior superintendent in charge of the Homicide Bureau of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, Mr. Rishi Singh. I came to this place shortly after assuming responsibility as Minister of National Security. I would have come with some previous knowledge about its work as a practicing attorney at law, as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, and of course, having assumed the responsibility as minister, I visited this along with many of the other establishments across national security. When I visited here, I would have been told certain things by the leadership and members of staff, and some of those things caused me to resolve in my responsibility as minister to address some of those along with the leadership of the Forensic Science Center. And certainly address them, we did. That resulted in changing some of the procedures that they applied. That resulted in wanting improved physical and plant facilities. That resulted in the procurement of certain items of equipment that they need in order to carry out their work. That included requests for upskilling and training of personnel who work here with a view of causing them to be more professional, better trained, and to operate optimally. So we began work on that, and we have been working on that for the last two years. I decided a few weeks ago to come back today to interface with the leadership and to see what kind of progress from them we have made and how it has impacted our service to the criminal justice system of Trinidad and Tobago and our service to the people of Trinidad and Tobago who are traumatized by crime and this institution as a science-based institution has a critical role to play in the criminal justice system and in prosecuting and causing to be demonstrated as innocent persons when that is required. So I would first like to thank you, Mr. Sanka, for your hospitality and stewardship this morning. I would like to thank you, Madam Nasir, in your capacity. I would like to thank every member of your staff who engaged with us this morning quite professionally and with the dignity that is required of all of us. And it was a most wonderful meeting. I would gather from it that many of the things that we decided we would do had been done and is improving. So let me outline a couple of them and then we will take it from there. When I came here, the DNA system was largely out of whack. An important piece of equipment that they used was out of service and we took action to sorting that out. When I came, we were, the police service was sending some items of evidence, even in murder cases, abroad for DNA analysis. That is no longer the case today because we were able to acquire the machine, we were able to engage the users of it in training and so on, and all of the supporting bits of equipment, the consumables like reagents and so on, we were able to arrange for better procurement systems, and now we have them. We were able to refurbish and improve the area in which they conduct their work. So I have had reports this morning of substantial improvement in that regard. I would have improvements this morning. I, we, 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 we had so much items of evidence around here. Some of it had out... It had outgrew the spaces that were available to it. So we needed to acquire some refrigerators. We needed to acquire some containers in order to secure and store these items of evidence. And we have come a long way now into and past that. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I have been in constant contact with the police who 
would report to me as minister, and they are another arm of national security, as the Forensic Science Center is, how the work we do here affected the police in the course of doing their work. So I will allow Mr. Sankar to tell us more specifically now about some of the matters we addressed and how we addressed them and how they have improved. And um, then Mr. Singh will say how it has impacted the police and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Um, good morning. There are a number of areas that the Forensic Science Center, since the inception of Mr. Minister Hines, coming and intervening into the Forensic Science Center, has provided a lot of support for financial resources and the, you see, the, the, the thing is, it's a symbiotic relationship. Minister Hines will provide financial resources. But he wants to know what is my plan. He wants to know what it is I'm going to do with the money. It's called, and we justify what we need the money for. And the permanent secretaries as well at the top, I account to them. So, so it's a, a, a relationship where I have to tell them what I want the money for. It has to make sense. It has to be towards driving the casework, processing the casework, getting the casework done for the police, for the judiciary, for the DPP for the PCA and for the public at large. So when, when it makes sense, they approve it. Minister Hines will approve it, the, P, the Permanent Secretary will approve it, and the Budget Department will, will release the money to us. And this has been happening since the inception of Minister Hines. I would want to say that this, is, this minister has given the attention to the Forensic Science Centre. The most I have, I'm here 31 years and have received the most attention from Minister Hines. He always calls two weeks pass and you don't get a call from Minister Hines, something is wrong. He wants to know what the Forensic Science Centre is doing, what is our strategic plan, where are we going. He would examine it, we will discuss it back and forth. Um, where are we going with case um, backlogs? Where are we going with um, in terms of equipment staff? Is the staff happy? Is the, um, the, the plant optimal? Can we make the plant better? And he has the two permanent secretaries, you know, as well, communicating directly to us. And that symbiotic relationship has has dealt us well. We, we have been able to repair the DNA modular unit from scratch. We actually did a physical infrastructure. We changed the, the joist, the, the wood, the flooring. We did over the air conditioning system and the DNA unit was closed for two years. And in September 2021, we started to, to and we commenced DNA operations where we do, did up to now 260 and more DNA profiles. And these cases were very, very crucial to the homicide department the cases where families were burnt out in houses and we couldn't identify them, decomposed bodies, we, we were not able to identify because we didn't have a picture of their face. The, when bodies are decomposed, they are totally um, down to the bone, the skeleton. A lot of families were missing their relatives and we had to actually take swabs from the family, do bone extracts um, for the DNA from the bone itself and match it. And we have had success in 23 cases of unidentified bodies that were both beneficial to the public at large so that they can bring closure to the, the, to the, um, you know, to the issue of whether that is my child. And, and that is very important to minister. In fact, a number of the cases that came to my attention at the Forensic Science Centre was through the, the calls of the minister. And people wouldn't know that. And, you know, and he would ask us to report in a short space of time what is going on. And through the intervention from the public, from the minister and from various stakeholders, we are able to fast track some of the cases because we know we are all part of Trinidad and Tobago. We are, we, the Forensic Science Centre is not a physical building alone. It has people working here who care we are, and we have concern about the population at large. And with the, with the leadership at Bodhi put two permanent secretaries and the minister, we have been doing a lot. And, and even the minister has caused a, 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 you know, that, a closeness now with the homicide division. And the homicide division as well need results. And we have a lot of the results, both the ballistics and the DNA. And we have the other forms of exhibits as well here. The Forensic Science Center is the place where the experts analyze the exhibits and the certificate of analysis that is prepared. The courts rely on that as expert evidence in any matter. That drives the, the, the judicial system. The, the judge is not the expert. He listens to the evidence that is presented and the expert that process the evidence. Again, improvements were made in the biology section. We got it run, up and running. We bought new equipment for the toxicology section, the chemistry section. We spent over $7 million in the last four or five months in, 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 in purchasing new equipment for different sections that needed um, you know, equipment. And some of the equipment that we used before had reached end of life. Some of them, we had, we had service contracts for them, but we felt that we needed to, to have new reliable um, equipment 
in order to make the system more efficient to have a greater turnover of cases. And this, this is what we have been massaging all the time, the Ministry of Finance to get money, and we have been getting the money, we have been getting the approvals. Minister Hines has even gone as far as um, um, assisting me personally in training the 21 police officers in forensic ballistics. So we now have a cadre of 25 forensic ballistic experts to tackle the, 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 the firearm problem. I have, I have trained all 26 persons, five staff and 21 police officers, and they are now gasseted. And that is a, a direct assistance from the, the Parliamentary Council, the, the Cabinet, who has approved it. And legal notice 83 of 82 of 2023 has now brought forward. We have 23 firearm examiners, 19 police officers who are, who are now experts and can give evidence. So we expect, and the police already have assisted in over 2,000 cases in the last two years. Previously, previously we had done about 150 cases a year. Now we are doing about 2,000 cases in the last two years. A minister, you know, with, with the, with the gazetting. That should go up to 1,500 cases a year. And that is a substantial impact on the processing of firearms for cases that are in court and pending in court. That will substantially um, reduce the time taken for cases to be called now in court. Um, with, and the DPP and all the different stakeholders, they need these reports. So we at the Forensic Science Centre, we had a vision. We projected the vision to minister. Minister agreed with it. And we now have been able to dig deep into reducing our backlog and to get the cases done. Minister had, uh, has entrusted and fortified our position as the Forensic Science Centre of Trinidad and Tobago, where the, the experts provide the evidence. And the Ministry of National Security as an apparatus in itself has got together, worked with us, and supported us. And as director, this is, this is coming from my heart to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. We, we, we deal with the, the unfortunate events that take place in persons' lives. And we care a lot about the, the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. We care, we want to do something, and, and that care, we try to convert it into um, actual reality uh, with the support of everyone in the Ministry of National Security. We have made strides again in, in storage of firearms, in, in able to, to spread out the exhibits that we, because we have more examiners now. We are going to buy uh, $3 million in equipment again for the firearm section. We are looking at, at in the future, we are looking at where we want to be, where there is no backlog, where to get the forensic center optimum. And we have, as Minister indicated earlier, a new forensic science center, seven times the size of the, of the, the present. We are on one acre of land. We are getting seven acres of land and a forensic science center with 62,000 plus square footage compared to the building we have now. So it looks, all looks well with the support of the Ministry of National Security, the permanent secretaries and minister. And, um, you know, the Forensic Science Center will improve um, step by step. And in a very short space of time, this happened. Within two years, uh, drastic changes. So I'm very thankful and appreciative for getting the support, the full 160% support, as they say, to, to make the Forensic Science something, the Center a better place, a better institution, a professional institution where accuracy is, is of paramount importance. We deliver an impartial service using established forensic science principles. And we will continue to do so, continue to, 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 to assist the public, and we will continue you know, in our drive to be better and to, to make the courts you know, more reachable in a shorter space of time. So that ma matters when persons say seven years ago, they have matters seven years ago or 10 years ago. And you, we are dealing with those matters because if they touch and concern a particular judge, a particular master of the court, who is doing case management and they want the cases, we prioritize them and get it to the court. We report, I report directly to the court on these matters, give evidence directly before the court, as well as my scientific officers. So we try to meet the court, reach the court and understand the demands of the court and the entire needs of Trinidad and Tobago, especially when we have the situation as it is. We try to change, adapt and innovate to get our part of the, um, the bargain done. We know our responsibilities and we will try to get our end of the bargain completed and as well as the other institutions. Thank you, Minister, for the opportunity. Thank you very much. I would like to ask uh, Senior Superintendent Singh to tell us about how this work has impacted police investigations in treating with the crime problem in Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Minister, Mr. Sanka, Ms. Nathir, members of the media, Trinidad and Tobago. The police 
service is represented by me this morning at this meeting as part of the process review. The police service, as you well know, is the primary customer of the Trinidad Tobago Forensic Science Center. And so we're here this morning to really assist in the way their observations or their implementation um, has impacted our observations in relation to our primary product, which is really the investigations into crime. We are pleased to say that as it relates to the various heads, that is issues of the biology under DNA, issues of ballistics, issues of chemistry and other um, services they provide, we have been receiving the products in a much more timely manner. As a result of that, we have been able to bring closure in many instances to members of the public whose families um, have suffered from crime. In particular murders, we have brought closure to the identification of bodies and family members were able to successfully, uh, peacefully um, deal with the issues of remains. As it relates to issues of the ballistics, we have been able to make several connections between um, the firearm use, actual possession, and the actual commission of the crime, resulting in us having better standards of evidence presentation, giving us the confidence that at the time of presentation, the standards of evidence we will be able to discharge beyond reasonable doubt to bring that conviction that we require. We are confident, having seen um, the interface this morning. We have discussed that there are issues of processes that still needs to be improved upon and steps have already been taken to develop the necessary partnerships to ensure that the issues are going to be streamlined and we'll continue to make our observations um, on what we can do from our end in terms of the standard of the way we collect and deliver to the centre also is something that we also will review with them, create earlier points of consultation to ensure that the material that's coming has great relevance and likelihood of success in terms of whatever fields and realms of testing that is, that is available. Um, but largely, the, we want to assure members of the public um, because the issue has been raised before in relation to the presence of police officers at the center. And I just want to reiterate that the police officers that are here are here to execute the mandate of the Forensic Science Center. They are attached here and are under the leadership of the director to independently execute the functions of the center to the standard that citizens would reasonably expect. So this is the primary presence of myself this morning to lend support to the review process and I can say that from our end, we are very pleased with the progress that has been made and we will undertake to support the initiatives that will assist in future development. Mr. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Singh. As the director alluded to a while ago, you would have been told, members of the media, that in recognition of the fact that this building served the people of Trinidad and Tobago very well over the years of its existence and operation as a forensic science center. We took the decision as a government that we would provide a brand new and improved space for this very important element of the Ministry of National Security. The Trinidad Tobago Forensic Science Center is one of the four elements of national security that interfaces directly with the criminal justice system. The Forensic Science Center, for reasons that have been made quite obvious by the Director and Senior Superintendent Singh, we also have the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, which is why Mr. Singh is here, one of the key stakeholders they are the ones who are to prevent 
investigate crimes in Trinidad and Tobago and to bring perpetrators to justice and of course to set the innocent free on, and they do so on the basis of scientific support from the Forensic Science Center. The other element of the National Security Platform is the Probation Department. It used to be under social development, it is now with us. And they are a group of independent professionals who advise the court, issue reports on different persons and situations that the court would need in determining issues of rights of children, domestic violence issues, and even out-and-out -out criminal cases in the realm of sentencing and that sort of thing. The probation service renders advice and reports to the court to assist it in its deliberations. And finally, the Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service, which is the place and their motto is to hold and treat where when persons are remanded in custody or incarcerated as a result of a conviction by the court, it is the prison service that holds them safely to protect them from themselves and to protect the society from them. And of course, to treat them in the philosophy of restorative justice, which we have been applying in Trinidad and Tobago since 2002. They are the stakeholders who generate programs and teachings and guidance to our inmates so that they can be restored from criminality and no longer be a threat to you that they can be reintegrated safely back into the society and avoid the revolving door that we had come to know. So it is the Forensic Science Center, the police service, the prison service, and the probation department that are the four agencies of national security that interface with the criminal justice system. And I took the decision when I came two years ago to put muscle on every one of them, to improve them, provide the resources as is my responsibility. I know some members of the national community asking me quite ignorantly about crime plan. And I had to point out as gently as I may that ministers do not get involved in operational matters of the police service or any other agency for that matter. And to create a plan for the police service to deal with crime would be more than getting involved in operational issues which the minister does not. It is the police service that generates a crime plan. It is the police service that generates a strategy, both of which they have, both of which they shared and constantly share with me. Since I must know in order to assess how the public is being served and in order to assess how the actors and the performers are performing in the conduct of their plan and strategy in delivery of policing to the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. It is also my responsibility, as I've said politely time and time again, to provide resources. And you would have heard from the director, that is a perfect example of what my plan is, to provide resources when called upon by the professionals, whether it's in the Forensic Science Center or the police service, to facilitate their carrying out their plans. If you left crime plans to me as a politician, PNM and partisan as I am, you run the risk of me politicizing crime, which is precisely what this society does not want. So, we took the decision that we will create a new space for the Forensic Science Center, and we have done that. We have secured a parcel of suitable land. Plans have been drawn and have been approved. And we did so in collaboration with one of our international partners, in this case, China. And we expect in furtherance of this development, a $30 million facility in the St. Joseph area for a brand spanking new forensic science center, seven times, and the number is significant, isn't it? Seven times bigger than this one, and it will be outfitted with the, the, the most modern of technologies. 
We are in the process of procuring certain things now to advance the work of the Forensic Science Center, and we will make sure that those things are legacy into the new building so that we could continue to use them in that new plant. So we are going to be getting new equipment, and we will continue to do that. And when we get that building, we'll be outfitting it so that it could carry out its mandate in the service of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm really looking forward to that. We expect the technical people from Beijing to be here within a short order. I wouldn't want to, perhaps within the next three weeks or so, when we will sign the MOU with the government of the Republic of China, the People's Republic of China. And when we do that, a contractor will be identified and the work will start. And we expect that that work will take place over an 18 month period. So I am really looking forward to that, to avert some of the spatial issues and circumstantial issues. Yes, yes, well, yes, 30 US million, of course. Thank you. And um, we will be doing that. I would like to say as well that the government of Trinidad and Tobago, as you already know, come Monday morning and Tuesday, have invited and received acknowledgments of the attendance of a number of other Caribbean leaders from throughout CARICOM. And those couple who can't come will send a representative to a crime symposium where we will be viewing crime as a public health concern. This comes Monday the 17th and Tuesday the 18th. A number of experts and professionals in all aspects of the criminal justice system and outside. And they are coming from outside of the criminal justice system because the understanding is that we now need to take some additional approaches, new approaches, enhanced approaches where they were not new, to seeing the management of crime from a whole of government, whole of society, perhaps whole of region perspective, because every single country in the Caribbean, in CARICOM, have been experiencing the same thing that you are reporting on in Trinidad and Tobago on a daily basis. The influx of assault weapons of all descriptions, copious amounts of ammunition. I mean, I would have heard this morning, when traditionally, one of the analysts here in the ballistic, not ballistic, in the firearm section, fire, firearm ana an analysis section, when they would have had to deal with two shells on a crime scene, and that's two pieces of inquiry they would have had to conduct scientifically along with the weapon when and if the police found it. Now, in some cases, it's 70 different shells, and each one will require separate analysis. So that officer who would normally have taken a few moments or maybe a day or two to complete an investigation, a scientific investigation into the matter, will now take substantially more because we are now talking about 74. So I only said that to demonstrate to you the amount of ammunition that is in the hands of criminals out there who are not afraid to using it. That's what we're up against. And every country in the region, the Bahamas, St. Vincent, St. Lucia, Grenada, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago. That's our experience. So we are having this symposium and we'll be treating with matters pertaining to crime as a public health issue. We'll be having intellectuals from across the region, from our own University of the West Indies. We'll be having professionals on mental health issues, social development issues, issues of, of, of the family, and I noticed, notwithstanding some of the, the fluff that you would find in the dispatches on a daily basis, I noticed that a poll was conducted by one of the daily newspapers in the middle of all of this, and it was very inspiring to me, and very instructive to see that the large majority of respondents in that very superficial and skimpy poll, notwithstanding, it, they revealed that they understood clearly that it had to do, this problem we are having with crime 
had to do with issues around the family and parenting. And that will be one of the main focus points in this symposium because it is becoming clearer and clearer that parents are the first and supreme and best crime stoppers. I give due credit to you and your policing experience and your investigative skills and your leadership of the homicide division and all of the work that you all do, the defense force and all the elements of national security. But there's an emerging view that parents are the best crime stoppers. And it is that kind of thing that the next two days will be focused upon so that out of it, the leaders of the Caribbean are expected to glean ideas that will now shape our respective government's policies in responding to crime. Now, Trinidad and Tobago has been doing that for many years. I have said to you before, help me with this, please. I've said to you before that our seamless seven billion a year education platform from early childhood to primary school, to secondary school, to tertiary level education, all supported, in some cases, absolutely free, and at the tertiary level, largely supported by the state, is part of our understanding for decades that crime is not only a matter for law and police and court, but if you prepare balanced, learned individuals in your society who can contribute to themselves, who can contribute to their families and to the society by virtue of what they learned and the skills they acquired because we have a very robust tertiary and, um, tech voc sector and we have many training programs available to every young person in this country who needs it. So those represent our understanding a long time ago that to deal with crime you had to make certain provisions from an education standpoint. We have a social development and family services ministry, so-called because of what it does. It interfaces with citizens who find themselves on the edge and in need. They dispense something like $7 billion a year to help with social security, um, uh, medical health, uh, medical assist, um, people who are um, uh, sick, disability grants. Um, they give glasses to children. They give meals. Senior citizens grant old age pension. They pay rents for people when circumstances warrant it. They make liaisons with the Ministry of Housing, another ministry that provides low cost housing in an understanding that the government realizes that you can't have a community and a family without a home. So for many decades, from the NHA to the HDC, we have been producing houses at a subsidized rate, sometimes subsidized as much as $350,000, $500,000 to make homes easily accessible to our citizens who need them. And rental apartments, I know when rents was $12 and $18 a month, not long ago as member of parliament. Now the minimal rent might be about $150, but in any language, it is a serious social outreach to our citizens who need it. So I'm saying, whether it's education, whether it is sport and the arts, whether it is community development, whether it is housing, whether it is the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service, all of those are already built in elements of the governance of the pe for the people of Trinidad and Tobago as we approach crime and understanding that it might be a public health issue and these are responses to it. So we expect at the end of the symposium that the professionals would have, having put their intellects together, offered the participants, not the least the leaders of the countries, ideas that we can use possibly to reshape our policies and dispense them to the arms of our respective national security platforms so that they would be so guided, providing them with the resources that they need so that the good stories that we heard this morning, and I'm quite proud and pleased of the Forensic Science Center. We saw what we saw two years ago. We embarked upon a program of work as much as the budget can have afforded us, and we have made tremendous progress. And I have on record here today the senior superintendent in charge of the homicide division telling us that they have had significant support from the Forensic Science Center, and it is assisting them. 
They have a cold case unit. Mr. Singh was short on his expressions. He should tell you more about it. The last figures I saw last year in the, in, in the cases that were solved, some of them were from 2016. So the cold case unit that is up and functional inside of the homicide or with the working with... Uh, yes, yes, tell us about it now. Tell us what they're doing. I mean, I, I don't know it as well as you. <laughs> uh, yes, so... And how the Forensic Science Center supported them. Right. So I would just want to start that off. I just want to put on record, of course, that there is no statutory limitation for serious crimes, indictable matters, homicides, of course, being murders being um, highest amongst those in the context of how serious that it's viewed. So in the context of cold cases, that's the beginning of it. No matter how old a case is, no matter how old um, a case is, we will continue to inquire into it. So that's just primarily to give citizens the understanding that even if you don't get results right away, rest assured that we will continue to inquire into it. And amongst the pieces of evidence that assist, of course, are the elements of forensic evidence. So say, for instance, and, and for, to explain and put context to it, sometimes you have to give some general scenarios. Say, for instance, some years ago, an individual was killed. We did not recover the firearm at that moment. However, we recovered spent shells on the scene. The way the system is set up, if we recover a firearm in the near future, or if we have already recovered, when you do the testing, the ballistic testing, it will make a connection to that firearm and the spent shell recovered on, on the scene. And that, along with other elements of evidence, will go together to make a case against an individual, perhaps. But all of these things are relative and contingent, even in the context of the way the DNA situation is progressing. We may have recovered DNA on a scene. However, we may not have necessarily matched an individual as yet. When, as we evolve, the database is built, um, other persons come into custody and comparisons are made, we may very well find that that DNA matches now one of another, a person who we would now base along with the information that exists and that which we will develop will actually cast suspicion on that individual and help us to perhaps build a case beyond reasonable doubt against them. So in very a simple situation of a person who didn't speak years ago actually coming forward at a later point is also the beginnings of evidence. You know, sometimes circumstances change and people decide that I have witnessed and I now have the courage to speak. And all of these things come together to assist in the solving of cold case matters. So you still have the human elements, you have the scientific evidence all coming together to assist in developing these cases. And just to give that assurance again, no matter how old the homicide is, once we get evidence, we will bring closure to it. Mr. Minister. Yes, um, just want to fortify what um, Superintendent Singh is saying. About a month ago, I had um, was summoned to, to, um, to a court matter, a 2005 court matter, where there were two accused in custody. And the, the, um, the person, a person had died, and there were clothing items with blood. The Forensic Science Centre in 2019, 2020, had analyzed the, the blood samples. So we got the DNA profile from those two samples. And the two samples, the DNA profile was different, indicating that there were two separate persons that contributed the blood on the clothing of the victim. Uh, we then processed the DNA from the two suspects and profiled those, um, the suspects um, DNA or through blood samples as well and um, nasal swabs. And it was found that the, the, the suspect's blood was con the DNA profile was consistent with the samples of blood found on the victim's um, clothing, which put the, the two accused on the scene of the crime. And, uh, you know, that, that strengthened the prosecution system in, in, in prosecuting the case. And that's a 2005 case, which is considered a cold case. So the, the real evidence, uh, sometimes I have to give the evidence in court, the Forensic Science Center gets in, does the DNA profiling, and confirms, um, you know, beyond doubt, that these are the persons who were really involved in committing the crime. And this is a 2005 matter. So it changes the landscape 
of how prosecution takes place. It builds confidence in the prosecution system. It builds confidence in the strength of the evidence that is the judge has to receive. It makes the job of the judge and the jury easier. And this is where the forensic science center gets in. And with the strengthening of all our apparatus here and equipment, it just makes the, 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 um, the results more reliable in the context to assist the police. It makes the police job easier. Thank you very much. Recently, I received information from the police and the commissioner of prisons that a serving prison officer was charged for murder. That was a murder that took place in 2016, in 2007. 2007. Of course, he was not a prison officer at the time of that crime, but he may have come through the recruitment process undetected as a suspect. And I don't know if he was a suspect in 2007, but I immediately saw, I asked myself, if a man was a suspect, if he was, because I don't know. Yes. If he was a suspect in 2007, that is a fact that should have been known to those who are processing an application to become a member of the protective service. That's a fact that should be known. What they do with the information, how they treat with him is a different story. But I inquired now as to whether that fact was known on his application to become a prison officer in, I think, 20, whenever. I'm awaiting an answer to that. Because if he was a suspect and he was able to be recruited without that being taken into account, it means we have some process, procedural issues to improve. Yes? And in so far as that is concerned, recently we have about 300 and 275 or thereabout recruits in the defense force, air guard, coast guard, and regiment. They were supposed to have gone in in September of last year. But as Minister of National Security, dispensing government policy, I shared with those heads of national security, including the chief of defense staff, that the people of Trinidad and Tobago wanted to be assured that before any one of those applicants going forward, and this is for the, all the agencies, enters foot into our training agencies, training institutions, they must be properly and thoroughly vetted. And that process for the 275 or so of them took a little longer because that meant going into their communities in a more thorough way. It was always done when I joined the police service. Police personnel came and inquired about my neighbors, from my neighbors, about me. But on this occasion, I insisted that it be more thoroughly done. The schools, past schools, the communities, and not simply police certificates of character, but the police in the district where they live had to put in a comment as to what information they may have had in relation to an applicant. That is all in addition to putting their faces in color on the newspaper with their name and their address to get the public's intervention in the recruitment process. So I am saying these are the kinds of things that we ensure that is done in order to provide a better product. So again, I would like to thank the Forensic Science Center. I would like to thank the police service. As Minister of National Security, I'm very encouraged by the work you all are doing and give you the assurance that is, as is my responsibility, I will carry your requests, your thoughts, your suggestions to the level of the cabinet and have it funded where it has to and provide you with the resources that you would continue. Not the least, a brand new forensic science center within a relatively short space of time. I would like to thank you all very, very warmly for your time. And we will take any questions that you may have in relation to the deliberations today. Let me repeat, we will take any questions you have in relation to the matters that we called you to share with the national community today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. This is TV6 News on the spot.